often ask, should we be using the autopilot during our instrument training? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and you are listening to the Instrument Pilot Podcast brought to you by our number one rated online ground school, groundschoolacademy.com, m0a.com. You can check it all out there. It is just an exclusive, amazing family of aviators pursuing mastery and in the business of becoming safer, smarter pilots along the way. And it is just absolutely outstanding. We're so thankful uh, for what you all do and continue uh, to do for us. Should we be using the autopilot? You know, one of the uh, early presentations that really put M0A on the map, and actually, you, I don't know if you, how much of M0A history you know, um, M0A launched way, way back in the day, 2008. I'd have to get the exact dates. I want to say it was April 15th, 2008. I published on a blog called M0A.com a post called To Error is Human. And it was exactly about the JFK Jr. accident. That JFK Jr. accident really uh, launched a career as we began to talk about it. I've done videos at length about it. Every four or five years we remake it, learn new research, and it's probably one of the most researched accidents, certainly most researched by myself as well. And one question that comes up time and time again is Jason, JFK Jr. had an autopilot, why didn't he use it? I believe there's a few reasons for this. I mean, first off, again, he was a, a brand new private pilot, uh, just barely started his instrument training. And, you know, we operate now with the philosophy of you gotta know how to use every single resource in that airplane. And that may not have been the case back then when all this occurred, but my argument, we know for a fact he did not use the autopilot. We don't know the why. Maybe he didn't know how, maybe it wasn't working, maybe he wasn't comfortable with it. That we will never ever know, unfortunately. What I do though know is that we have to be in a position where if it's in the airplane, we have to know how to use it. I don't want you to show up for your instrument check ride and a fair game question could be, the examiner could ask and say, hey Jason, Show me an autopilot coupled ILS approach or GPS approach. And you go, oh, I've never done that. And that, that's basically a freebie at this point, right? Let the autopilot shoot the approach. That's a freebie if you know the programming behind it. And not everybody knows the programming behind that. So you have to be smart with that. You have to know how to use your autopilot. Now, this is not just great real world advice. This is check right advice, this is all the above. Now, the opposite of this is true because I know students who rely so heavily on their autopilot for their instrument training that when that examiner asks them to hand fly an approach, it's 50-50 if they're gonna pass that check ride because they rely on the autopilot too much. There needs to be a balance. You should know how to work it you should know how to program it. You should expect to do one on your check ride. And that's your, that's your freebie of the few approaches you have to do. I want you ready for that and prepared to do and accomplish that as well. But you need to know how to use all available resources in the cockpit. This goes back that if you have an ADF in the airplane and it works and there's an NDB approach near you, there's a high probability you're going to shoot that NDB approach. If it's in the airplane, you should know how to use it. And this isn't just like navigation avionics. This could be your, your engine management system. If you have an EI gauge or a JPI gauge, it could be a part of that. Your fuel totalizer. It, if it's in the airplane, you could and very well may be asked, what is it? What does it do? How do you use it? Bad story, and I can share it now because time heals all stories. Uh, I wasn't always the best student. That's no secret, right? You, you know that. It, was, it wasn't until I became a CFI that I actually learned to become a, uh, a, a, good, uh, a good pilot. And I'm still just a good pilot. A good pilot's always learning, right? If I ever call myself a great pilot, that's when you watch out. That's a hazardous attitude right there. 
But I remember back in the olden days when uh, we had a lot of NDB approaches and there was someone with an instrument check ride coming up. All the, all the kids at the school, and we were just kids, we were in aviation college, we would go and we'd placard the, uh, <laughs> the ADF in up, pull the breaker, you know, note it and everything else. And so the check ride examiners came and said, oh, sorry, Mr. Miss Examiner, we cannot do any NDB approaches today. It's in up. It's not working. It was bad. It was really, really bad. Ask me to shoot an NDB approach now, right? Uh, it would take a little bit of practice in the simulator. It's such an easy little device. It just points towards the beacon, but uh, it can produce some challenges as well. But my purpose for this short little uh, episode of the podcast is, yes, if you have an autopilot, you need to know how to use it. You know how to couple it to shoot your approaches. You're probably going to get a freebie on your check ride. If you're relying too heavily on your autopilot to do things that you should be hand flying, that's gonna come back to bite you in the long run. Know how to use everything in the cockpit. That's what's gonna prove so important. And this isn't just for a check ride. This is for just being a safe, real world operator. After all, that's what we're really all aspiring to be. So m 0 Nation, thank you for being such a blessing. Thank you if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook as a video. Thank you for your comments on iTunes. Thank you for making this one of the top and most listened to aviation podcasts on iTunes. Thank you for your five-star reviews. Thank you for your emails, your comments. We absolutely love every bit of it. If myself and this M0A.com team can serve you in any way this week, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.